Welcome to MicroCAP demos. In this demo, we will quickly review setting up some of the common options uh, in MicroCAP, and then we'll do a simple AC analysis of a filter. The first thing that you'll probably want to set is under File Paths. If you open MicroCAP for the first time, it will start out in MicroCAP's own demo files, uh, which I would highly recommend that you investigate those circuit examples. However, I prefer to use Use Less Path in the file dialog. That way you don't have to keep finding your path every time you open a new file. A number of other options that you will see are under the Options bar. If you start with Preferences and look at General, you'll see a number of things have already been set up. Here you'll probably just want to put in your own username and or company name as necessary. Under Analysis, Dynamic Auto Run uh, reruns a simulation whenever you change a parameter in the circuit. This can lead to some problems with time consumption. Essentially, every time you change something, it automatically tries to run the simulation. You might want to turn this off so that you can do simulations after you change several things on your circuit, for example. So I'll click on Apply. The rest of the options I tend to leave as default. You could turn on the Analysis Progress bar, for example, if you wanted to do so. Under Circuit, I tend to keep the default options. I don't change anything there. Autosave might be an option that you want to uh, implement yourself. For example, autosaving circuits before running analyses might be helpful. I tend to keep most of the other settings in their default values. Default properties for new circuits essentially gives you a lot of uh, graphical user interface uh, information, uh, colors, fonts, grid text, and so on. I tend to leave these again at their defaults. Under globals, spice type, I tend to leave that ambiguous because that will allow MicroCAP to choose its whichever is useful. Everything else I leave in their default values. User definitions, me uh, measure definitions, they'll bring up several .lib files where you can manually change stuff. Again, I do not change those and leave them in their default values. Go ahead and open a new file. Again, now that I've changed to, to my last used pile, it chooses, uh, brings up whatever I opened last. I'll go to the libraries and go to the file for this demonstration. Here we have a simple RC filter. Essentially this is going to be a bandpass filter. If you notice circuit element C1 is currently disabled. When I hover my mouse over it, it says disabled, it's grayed out. You get to that by clicking enabled in the device window that pops up. Right now let's leave that disabled. You'll notice that the AC signal source V1 is not directly connected to the circuit. Instead, I connected its output to a node that I named IN, and the input to the circuit is also labeled IN. So essentially, these two wires are the same node, even though they're not physically connected on the schematic. The circuit consists of a 470 nanofarad capacitor connected in series with R1, which is 1 kilo ohms, and R2, which is 10 kilo ohms. So let's do an AC analysis of this circuit. We'll go choose AC. The frequency range will again be logarithmic. We'll go from 1 hertz to 100 megahertz, which is not necessary. Let's do 1 megahertz. We'll correct the um, X range and Y range to auto always and run the simulation. As you can see, this circuit exhibits a high pass filter characteristic. Since the capacitor is in series, it does not let through DC voltages, and as a function of the RC time constant, we have our 3 dB cutoff frequency. We can use the cursor mode to identify that 3 dB cutoff frequency. At 1 megahertz, the uh, output is at minus 827 dB. So if I were to go find, I can use the uh, shift keys, sorry, the arrow keys to 
move back and forth. The 3 dB frequency of this circuit is essentially 30 Hertz. When we look at the phase down below, we can see that it starts out at a plus 90 degrees phase shift and at high frequencies, much above the 30 Hertz cutoff, the capacitor is essentially a short and the phase is now zero. Let's go back to the circuit, double click on C1, and this time enable it. Click OK, go back to AC analysis. <clears throat> because I disabled the auto run feature, it did not rerun the simulation. I'll now hit the run button or I could use the F2 function key. And now we have a bandpass characteristic due to the capacitor C1. Now we can actually choose to manually adjust the X and Y axes on these figures. Right now these figures are a little too broad. So under limits, I can change these values. I'll keep the X range values the same as they should be. 30 dB is more than enough to show the insertion. So the Y range, the maximum will be zero. The minimum will be minus 30 dB. And let's use 5 dB steps. Likewise, we can do plus 90 to minus 90 with 30 degree steps for the phase. Let's click run now. And now we can see the characteristics of the circuit much clearer.